everybody. Well, well, welcome to Cheltenham Gold Cup Day. Um, not that any of you naughty punters are interested, but my name's Ben Keith. I own Star Sports and I wanted to thank you all for your custom this week, but uh, before Luke Tarr and uh, Davey Russell uh, give you their expertise, I, I just wanted uh, to ask everybody to give the King of Cheltenham from yesterday with his 77, one, uh, 77 to 1 treble, a great bloke and a great jockey, can we give a, a big round of applause to Davey Russell. Yesterday, Davey, and I'm, I'm going to hand you over to Luke and uh, Davey now. However, uh, they, they put up far too many winners. Please just back the favourite. <laughs> you can tell why he's got money when the, the treble paid 377 to 1, but he laid 77 to 1. So that's how to do it. But Davey, look, amazing job. Thank you as always. And let's try and find at least two or three, four more winners as we go. I've got to tell you that Apple Shakira in the first was seven to two at the start of the week. It was 15 to eight when I woke up this morning. It was five to four when I went out of the shower. It's 11 to 10 now. This is the biggest gamble of the Cheltenham Festival. Make no mistake about it. And when you see the colors, you'll know why. It's quite clear that they have properly had it on. Is it gonna get the job done? Um, I, I, I definitely like her. Um, I've liked everything about her. And of course, she's got course and distance for him all through the season. Um, I actually think her biggest threat is going to come from another filly in Stormy Island, who's had two starts in France and one start in Ireland, and has been extremely impressive on her on her start in Ireland. Is Stormy Island? I think she's a great price at seven to one, and um, I do think the value is going out of is going out of Apple Shakira. I think it's a very competitive race, but I do think the two fillies. Uh, might take to the fore um, in this race. Uh, conditions will suit both. So I, I think we're, we, there's not as much of a difference between their ability as there is in their price. So I, factoring that in, I might even just go aside with Stormy Island. Right, because we haven't done enough money already this week, the one of the three pushes to deep today will be five to four Apple Shakira. It was five to four when you got here. You missed it at 11 to 10. We'll stick it back up until one o'clock. And like we say, it's not for fivers and tenners, it's for oneers as normal. We're moving on to the second race of the day, the Randox County Handicap. Look, desperately difficult race. You are Mick Dundee. Blue and Rouge, who looked like he was gonna win the Bet Fair Hurdle a couple of weeks ago. Kalashnikov came out Frank that form earlier in the week. And he's a strong favourite. The big anti-post liability is definitely ti flying tiger with us. Come on, find us the winner in the county, please. Yeah, I think the ground may just be gone on the slow side for Flying Tiger, but he does have North Fahelly on board, which is a huge plus. Uh, I'm going to go with another filly in this race, number 13, Mary DV, who won the listed race on her last start in Ireland in Punchestown. Um, I think she's rock solid form. She's coming from obviously the inform Willie Mullins table and Paul Townend on board. And just it being such a big field, I'm just going to give you one, one or two other selections. Uh, number 23, Duke of the Thai, is very much um, unexposed. Uh, I rode him on his first start and I rode him on his last start. Um, he jumps very, very well. He shows a lot of pace. Um, just a little bit worried that his inexperience will catch him out. But it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me if he's on the bridle coming to the second last. The hill is a slight worry, but you know, for a bit of value, he, he might be worth a small punt um, each way. And another one, um, maybe higher up the higher up the the handicap is um, a hair is a hair breath, uh for Ben Pauling and Daryl Jacob. I think it has a, a small outside squeak. Uh, one a grade a graded hurdle the last day. There's actually a video of him here winning in Ascot. Well yeah, um, um, uh, keeping some very good company that day. So I think he could be one that's un unexposed. Right, we move through to the Albert Bartlett, the 250, the biggest anti-post liability of us at Star Sports by a mile coming into the Cheltenham Festival was Santini. It was eight to one when the circuit started. It's into three to one now. It's in everyone's multiples. It's the last leg of plenty. I can tell you we've laid this horse to connections to the yard for the 2020 Gold Cup. 
So it gives you an idea of what you, they think of this horse. The only thing I can tell you is, over the last 10 years in the Albert Bartlett, if you just picked up the paper in the morning and backed the horse that had run the most times in the race, you'd have backed two 33 to one chances and a 16 to one chance. It's a desperately tough race, as he'll tell you. These horses are real slog. And Callet Man on the card would be the one that ticked that box. But if you want to see the, uh, the, the losses move into the millions this week, and you'll probably never see this man again, then Santini's the one to finally make us lose all our jobs. Davey, would you want to be in the experienced ones or the one with potential? It's, it's, I, I'm tied between uh, horses from each side. Uh, Fabulous Saga will go a really good gallop in front. Uh, he's a good, solid, staying horse. Um, a horse, his form is not good, but his pedigree suggests that he, the step up and trip and the ground is a huge plus for him. Bally Ward, he's a point-to-point -point winner, um, or second in a point-to-point, he won a buffer, uh, he was fourth in his first start over hurdles, and he won his second start. This is his third start. There's another horse then with a lot of um, um, runs under his belt. It's a horse number five, Chris's Dream. He was ultra impressive the last day in Ireland on very, very testing ground. He's ridden by Mark Walsh, who was first winner uh, during the, the week. He'll be on fire. Uh, there's another horse called Ennis Coffee Oscar. Um, all these horses have pluses to them because their form is solid over three miles, which is a huge plus. I think there is enough horses in the field to take.